Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 is looking to be a worthy successor to the original game which came out over a decade ago. Recently, press, including Digital Foundry, were sampled a version of the game on PC pre-release to play some multiplayer as well as a number of the campaign missions. And after having played it, we wanted to make a longer form video about it because we were excited and there were some interesting technical things to talk about there. And I actually didn't take point here. My good friend and colleague Oliver McKenzie over there. Hi, Oliver. Hi, you Alex. were uh, kind of doing a lot of the recording here as well as a lot of the play while I was working on other things. So, Oliver, how you doing? Yes, I'm good. I've just returned from killing a lot of Tyranids, a lot of Tyranids, <laughs> and I'm here to tell you all about it. Yeah, when a big invasion occurs, that's kind of the thing to do. But yeah, so Space Marine. I think the first area we should talk about in this demo play that we had is actually in the visuals department. We can't show the recordings we made of the campaign itself, rather just of the multiplayer component, but we have some good B-roll here from the publisher to show off and talk about some of the visual features, but as well as some visual features that we could record in the multiplayer. So I would definitely say the first thing that I noticed while playing the game, uh, this preview version of the game, is that it captures the kind of extremely large scale that is known for in Warhammer 40k. So if you've ever looked at any Warhammer 40k artwork and stuff like that, usually like for, foreground your heroic figures and then just kind of huge gothic masonry and structures stretching far out into the distance while a whole bunch of other actions are taking place. So like large battlefield moments. And this game even though we're just, you know, kind of dropped mid-mission here, it's showing off exactly all that off in spades. And it's kind of incredible. And I actually really loved the way they captured a lot of the smaller moments in Warhammer 40k that, you know, you wouldn't really see. We talked about it uh, recently on DF Direct, but they have the, like, the whole execution sequence in the beginning. They also have, like, a number of rousing speeches uh, from uh, guardsmen kind of standing about, as well as a lot of the secondary figures walking around, like, uh, like I said, servitors and tech priests and a bunch of other really cool things and i think them capturing the scale so well is really good because it shows off that they're using some of the current gen cpu tech <laughs> that we finally have uh, a current gen game that is actually blowing out the scale thanks to greater cpus here and that's definitely the first thing i noticed what about you oliver yeah i think it's like really notable that first time you kind of enter combat is you facing off against what must be like at least three dozen or four dozen Tyranids at a time in like this big wave-based combat arena. And it's really, really intense, like really quite something. Um, and in the backgrounds of like some of the shots that you see, you'll see hundreds, if not thousands of foes swarming all over the place. It's like super impressive and gives you this in impression, this sense that you're fighting in this like incalculably larger battle, this much, much larger war. And that's a really cool thing that, yeah, you would not see in a game on previous generation consoles for sure, I think. And mm -hmm. the most impressive aspect to me is not just the fact that you have a ton of enemies on screen and a ton of enemies to fight, but it's the fact they're able to maintain like the basic visual fidelity of the world for those characters. You don't see like reduced rate animation. You don't see like enemies lacking shadow maps, which is what we saw in Exoprimal last year, which was like a notable visual concession. Often in these kinds of games, you see big visual concessions to support those crowds. But in this case, you actually get great overall visual quality and that dramatic sense of scale. And I think that's really what separates this game from a lot of other games that are trying to do a similar kind of thing. Yeah, and I also think a, a big part of it is it's it, the scale is also unified really well through the lighting technology in the game. Now, it is not doing anything like we've seen uh, like more recently, like hardcore ray tracing or anything like that. But I think it is utilizing tried and tested technology that we see from yesteryear, just pumped up to resolutions that make it look really good on a 4K set, uh, which is what I played it on. Mm -hmm. And one thing I did notice is that the game heavily makes usage of SSAO and screen space reflections. And you can see the screen space reflections probably most often on like the glossier metals in the game like the the Space Marines armor themselves, mm -hmm. a couple of the like gilded furnishings. Uh, that's kind of stuck across uh, the, the various architecture in the game. 
And then there's some bodies of water, too. Uh, some, uh, like in the first flight, that have like this interesting uh, water deformation. It is a bit gelatinous, but <laughs> I, love a good, I love a good water splash in a game that actually is 3D and undulates and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you see that. But also SSAO seems to ground a lot of the dynamic objects in the game. Uh, but when looking at the larger scale, uh, there is what appears to be a passive baked lighting, whether or not it's light maps or not, is hard to tell mm-hmm. uh, due to just the amount of time I've spent with the game. But it does capture things like local uh, bounce on a semi like medium scale. So yeah. like you had some great footage here, Oliver, of like you looking underneath and like an incline of some sort. And you can see the bounce light from the sun hitting a shadowed area from below yeah. and and i think that showed off that generally when you're walking around most things look well situated both in direct lighting and in indirect lighting and yeah. uh for direct lighting they're not doing anything too special there are they no it's just uh just you just see shadow maps basically <laughs> yeah <laughs> which look uh, pretty good overall they do exhibit some aliasing at more extreme angles and like shadow coverage for super fine details like the foliage not amazing, but there aren't any major issues, except in cutscenes, which we cannot show you at the moment. But there are some yeah. issues with shadow aliasing in those in those sequences. But yeah, I think the overall lighting quality here is like pretty good. If you go around in the environments, you can look and pick it apart. But like in general, there's some good GI solution in there. The SSAO is pretty heavy, but it does ground the world quite effectively. It makes mm. things look quite uh, natural in the environment. And uh, yeah, the SSR is like, it works okay. It works well enough. In the game. It's like not, <laughs> yeah. nothing extraordinary, but it works well enough. Yeah, it holds the visuals together enough, I would yeah. say. And I think uh, the other aspect that it's holding together are like the smaller, more micro detail found in the assets themselves. Like mm-hmm. if you look at the main character's armor, it's just tons of stuff there. Real geometric detail too, which I really like to see in a game. Uh and almost any asset you can walk across in the environment does have really great geometric detail and texture detail kind of baked into it. We did talk about this before. It doesn't reach like the like really intense level <laughs> like we saw in Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, which has a different perspective altogether. It's yeah. a first person game, which requires more micro detail on a smaller level. But given the the other things that this game is doing in terms of just kind of draw distance and things happening in that draw distance, I think there are reasonable con- concessions there uh, to geometric detail or even other detail up close. Uh, generally though, material quality across the board is great. Stone looks like stone. The rough kind of uh, plated metal on your character looks like well well taken care of by him. <laughs> and any of the other like rusty stuff that you can find because it's like broken masonry and everything all across uh, the world scattered around. That all looks really good too. Nothing looked out of place in terms of materials and it kept a generally high quality throughout the entire experience. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. For sure, the comparison with Warhammer 40k Darktide is a little bit tough because Warhammer 40k Darktide has some of the most intensely detailed environments I've ever seen in any game, let alone a multiplayer game. I mean, it's truly tremendous. Just a terrific level of detail. And you have all those parallax maps everywhere and they really go nuts. Yes. Um, But here, to be fair, the gameplay spaces are much bigger and it's a different, totally different tech and totally different vibe and different scope, very different scope. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it does a good job with a lot of the classic kind of Warhammer 40k metal and stone kind of environments. Uh, And those are portrayed very well here. But there's also like a jungle set mission available in this brief preview, which does look pretty good. You get like this mix of synthetic elements and the plants and the organics and all that stuff. So that looks pretty good. My only real concern with the assets in this title is probably the character models, because they tend to have a bit more of a video gamey look with maybe more simplistic skin shaders. Uh, The cutscenes in general aren't the most impressive here, but... That's probably a sensible place not to spend too much budget as we talk about quite frequently with these kinds of games. And of course we can't show you this at the moment, but yeah, I mean, they look, they look good, but it's like, you know, the rest of the game looks great. These, these are not quite as good, but it, 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 I think they serve their purpose just fine. Yeah. They're telling the story well. And you know, the first game also, if you go back to that, um, that was also running its own technology here, just like this is. This is not running on Unreal. This is using Swarm is mm-hmm. the name of the engine, I believe. And uh, that uh, had some 
<laughs> cutscenes that were more simplistic, just like this one here. But it was mainly just about conveying things to get you from scene to scene uh, with some cooler moments. But I would say that is one thing that I do not mind uh, in a game. If the cutscenes look just okay, that's fine. Um, but uh, the last kind of aspect I think we should talk about is like the mini kind of destruction you can see in the game, both on the smaller level and the bigger level. Like the bigger one I can see is they also showed it in preview videos for the game, like uh, while you're walking through uh, this hive city here. I at least think it's a hive city. Mm -hmm. um, there's like, it's just crumbling about you as the battle rages on. And like there's one moment where they show what looks like a bell tower crumbling into itself. There's like large pieces uh, of a building that will fall down. And these, I imagine, are probably using some sort of static or baked geometry animation yeah. of some sort because otherwise you're you're spawning and spending a lot of cpu time <laughs> <laughs> for something that you know is not actually doesn't need to be interactive in any sense of the word uh because it's out of reach of the player space usually and a lot of games have been doing this ever since around right when rise son of rome came out is the first time i remember hearing about them also when gears of war 4 uh came out they, they used them extensively in that game too and here they're just using it to embellish a lot of the background details but also up close oliver they have some stuff going on there too don't they yeah yeah like the in that kind of first mission you can actually see it in some of the assets they gave us you can kind of blow apart these statues and if you stop and kind of pop at them you can actually blow apart little bits and do sustained chip damage before you blow them up completely and there are like little bits in the world like that that are destructible they're very specific but like the little ammo boxes and chairs and tables and things like that all get can be disintegrated into little tiny bits and um, also I noticed that bullets leave kind of these 3D deformations in the environment which I'm not sure how they're doing that with like tessellation or something but it's it's a it's a very compelling looking technique and it doesn't break apart at like oblique angles either so that's that's quite yeah nice. Th there are a couple of ways of doing it and we've seen it before so i would be curious to see what it is i didn't actually spend too much time looking at that <laughs> <laughs> for some reason uh usually i love that kind of stuff yeah. uh but yeah a lot of really cool micro details so given how the game looks i was uh curious to see how heavy it would be and uh, I loaded up the game specifically on my high-end machine, the RTX 4090 Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, so a very beefy machine, and I set the game to 4K DLA or DLSS native, as I think the option is specifically called here. And they have, you know, stuff like FSR2 as well as a TAAU option, along with a couple other, um, like, SSR, SSAO, things of those nature, like a pretty short settings menu, but it gets to the point. And I think the one thing that I noticed off the bat is that the game in this preview build was heavy. Uh, so I was targeting 4K 60 FPS and it seemed like it was just about there on the GPU side of things. Like it could maybe have gone a little higher uh, with an unlocked frame rate. But uh, another thing that kind of punctuated uh, my experience and play was uh, a number of moments of higher frame time uh, where you would see like a spike up in frame time. And I usually call that stutter or hitches or something like that. And I think I noticed that uh, for in a variety of moments throughout my play. And I, I don't know, Oliver, did you see something similar on your end when you were playing it? Yeah, I did see some little minor issues, it seemed like, with traversal stutter and some issues with frame time spikes in other areas, like with cutscenes, which we can't show you here, but little issues on, on certain cutscene cuts. But for the most part, it's like kind of constantly heavy on the CPU. It doesn't change that much. It does change a little bit here and there, but it's kind of a game that is pretty heavy on the CPU. And like for my impressions on overall performance, uh, yeah, we can only show you footage from the two missions that we have. Unfortunately, not the campaign. We cannot show you our capture of that footage. Um, I played a few hours of the game on PC with an i7-13700K and a 4090. Uh, like Alex said, you get some toggles in the menu, uh, presets, low, medium, high, ultra, etc., etc. Options for FSR2, TAA, and DLSS, which is not uh, checked in terms of version number. But I went into the files and it looks like it's DLSS 3.7, but without the frame generation component. So no frame gen right. in this title at the moment. Uh, we don't want to go too deeply into the performance, I think, because it's not public facing code and there's some weeks until the game is released. But basically the gist is like 4K60, very achievable on the kinds of systems that me and Alex have, have like he said. 
um, with like DLSS in performance mode or DLSS in quality mode or indeed native DLSS, uh, there's no issues there. It's basically capable of a solid 4K60 on like a 4090 or with those lower DLSS settings, maybe with something like a 4080 or 4070 Ti. Um, I did try out at 120 Hertz as well with DLSS 2 in performance mode at ultra settings. And the overall impression is the game isn't quite there in terms of achieving a consistent 120 FPS on the current code. Usually a fair bit short of that, but above 60 FPS by a good margin. It's right. sort of on the heavier side of things for a current generation game in terms of that CPU requirement there. Reported CPU usage is at something like 80% using Task Manager. It's kind of loading up all the cores pretty heavily, even the performance cores a little bit. Um, I also tried to use uh, max settings at 720p to see if there's any GPU contribution there, and it really is just about the same in terms of frame rate. So it's really uh, CPU limited. But there's also some issues with shader compilation in the current code. So we can't show you this footage directly, it's from the campaign, but in the opening of the campaign level, there's some noticeable hitches when new effects occur on screen, like when the laser fires, when there's a big explosion, those do appear to be shader compilation related because when we run back through those sections again, those stutters do not occur. Actually, there is a shader burn where it says pre-creating shaders that happens when you start the game up. So there is an attempt at shader compilation. So we did reach out to Sabre to notify them of this issue. And they basically told us that they understand that their shader compilation process is currently missing certain shaders and that this should be fixed for the final release. So I wouldn't expect it to be a problem for the release code, but it is a problem for this code. Right. And uh, as a part of that, you, you do mention how when you uh, play the game at 120 FPS or attempted to play it at 120 FPS, that it seems like the, the CPU in the current version might have gotten in the way of making that a completely locked experience. And I think that points actually a bit how and what the expectations should be uh, for something that is like a mid-range PC. So Rich also loaded this up on the Frankenstein PC, which is an AMD 4800S desktop kit, a which is essentially an almost all-in-one PC using the Xbox Series X CPU uh, with a, a dedicated RAM in there as well, too. And he noticed while playing it that uh, achieving a locked 60 FPS currently was kind of a, a tall order. Uh, regardless of settings and, and resolution. And it didn't seem like the, the GPU was the thing getting in the way. And I find that very interesting uh, because it does make me question exactly what this game will perform like on console, where this uh, CPU-GPU combo that Rich is also using, there's an RX 6700 in there, which is closest to the PlayStation 5 GPU, where usually that is quite close to what we see on performance on console. We've seen that in the past before when we tested it with uh, Starfield, for example. Mm -hmm. And we could really well kind of hone in and show that, oh, if they do launch a 60 FPS patch for that game on console, well, it probably won't hit <laughs> 60 all the time. And guess what? That happened. So uh, <laughs> it does make me very curious to see how this game will perform on console, what resolution it'll target. And uh, also, is there going to be a 60 FPS mode? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, so like that Frankenstein console, very famous, which is used in a lot of videos. It is basically kind of a facsimile mashup of the two consoles, like you mentioned, and it does perform very closely to what we often see from that kind of premium PS5 Series X console experience. Um, so we tested out this game in a couple of configurations that we think might match the final code based partially on the PC specs, which do specify an RTX 3070 for 1080p at ultra settings. Probably the console code is not going to be uh, ultra settings, <laughs> possibly like a 1080p internal resolution. Maybe they'll use upscaling. Obviously, they have FSR2 in there. You know, lots of lots of things you can probably guess might be in there. Again, might be in there. So we tested high settings at 1440p with FSR2 on with uh, the DRS option, dynamic resolution scaling option, which should try to hit 60 FPS by changing the internal resolution that FSR2 is using to upscale to 1440p. And there the game was typically sub 60 FPS. It can get close, but it's usually a pretty good amount below. The game seems to be having some significant issues with CPU load, like you mentioned, because when Rich tested lower settings, it didn't really improve things much, but he did test out a 30 FPS lock, which he achieved with Special K as the in-game lock currently runs the game at 31 FPS, which is not ideal, not, not exactly a 30, 30 FPS lock there. And there, Rich was able to set the FSR2 reconstruction target to 4K, albeit with DRS enabled, 
And that might end up being a good option for console players, assuming something like a 30 FPS mode is exposed. I can imagine the developers giving players an option or perhaps for something like a 40 FPS mode or for various modes that might ta target unlocked VRR frame rates and things like this. I can imagine that also being a possibility. Uh, again, I would stress this is not final code. It could improve, but that's, that's how it is at the moment. Yeah, right. Uh, we don't have any insight into the consoles, actually. Uh, we have yet to preview any of that, to my knowledge. Uh, I don't think anyone's played it on console yet. This was an entirely a PC-based preview of unreleased code. So things are liable to change, hence why we don't want to talk too long and too much about it. So this footage that Oliver's been showing on screen right now hasn't looked too pretty and hasn't <laughs> been running too well. But honestly, the press footage that we were... Uh, given here to use as b-roll for uh producing videos and such it wasn't perfect in its own right and it's almost a bit of a shame that we can't show you our higher end footage that we <laughs> capture the game that makes it look better and super slick and runs really well uh, because the press footage here it both has performance issues and visual issues right oliver yeah so i just thought this was kind of a weird thing to to kind of note towards the end here because we were sampled some press footage and we were told you know, this is the footage you can use for the campaign. For the missions, you can provide your own footage, but here you have to use our footage. Like, okay, fair enough, but it is pretty weird because the footage does not show off the game in its best light. There are big frame rate drops, first of all, not just like occasional stutters here and there, like we would have observed on high-end PCs, but the game is actually running at like lowish frame rates for extended periods. I couldn't get a frame right. rate reading on it because unfortunately this footage is a little bit too compressed for our tools at the moment, but I counted it one section by hand and it was running at about 40 FPS in the most demanding section uh, on our high-end PCs in that section we're easily getting like 60 FPS maybe with one or two one-off frame drops it's not it's really not too bad uh, and it's obviously way better there are, are also some like weird issues which don't seem necessarily related to the performance of the underlying computer but might be related to maybe the age of the code or some other similar issue like during the right. execution scene we keep mentioning there is no shader compilation stutter, thankfully, but the guy who is calling for the execution is animating at about 30 hertz, even though the rest of the scene is updating normally at 60. And then there <laughs> is this uh, issue during that big kind of combat encounter in the first few minutes of the mission, where there's this alien who's running through the scene, this big alien, this big Tyranid, and he's animating every frame, but every five or six frames, he's like teleporting forward. He's like just <laughs> shooting forward. I did not notice that playing the PC code at all. Plus, image quality is not the most amazing. Uh, even though this footage is a little compressed, we can see a fair bit of breakup. I counted it at about 1080p. Actually, some of the shots I counted uh, came in at 1044p, slightly below 1080p. Based on the way that it looks, I guess that it's being upsampled to maybe 1440p or so. It does look reasonably sharp to my eyes relative to that internal resolution. It's it's kind of an open question as to what this is supposed to represent because it's clearly not representing the high-end PC experience. I kind of right. suspect it might be something in the vicinity of console spec. But yeah, in any case, I think they should have just let us show off our own footage because we can show the game <laughs> off, off better than this. Whether this comes down to like their PC or the build or some quirk of their capture setup or, or whatever, it's just not quite looking right at the moment. Yeah, it's always a shame that when there's either due to the spec of the PC that they recorded on or the state of the code or just the way they recorded it, we've also seen that multiple times before, that a game that arguably looks better cannot due to the, the kind of the footage that you can reasonably publish. And that's the case here. So to say the least, the footage that Oliver has been showing on the screen of any of the stuff uh, that is B-roll from the campaign, it looks better on our own personal computers, to say the least. And it runs quite a bit better too. Game's looking great, uh, has some issues uh, with regarding CPU performance in this little preview that we got and shader compilation, but we'll have to wait to see the release to see what that actually means uh, for the full game. But before we end this video, I think it'd be great to talk about the game itself because I actually had a great time playing it. And I'm someone who's played the first game like two times in my life. I kind of played it when it came out. There was a pretty interesting PC version that I had. And then I played it a good couple of years later, like using crazy stuff like SGS AA on it and stuff like that, where you could just run it at like a billion frames per second. And I always have a really great soft spot for the PC version of this game because it ran really well. And the game itself, uh, in an era when I don't know, uh, Gears of War was en vogue 
and uh, shover, cover shooting was all so popular. It was really fun to see a game that was just about you. Yes, you are a giant space marine, but unlike in Gears of War, a lot of shooters from its era, you actually don't utilize cover at all. And this game follows pretty much lockstep in continuation with the goals and gameplay of the original game. In fact, it, if you've just recently played Space Marine 1, this will feel like you're just playing it again. Not in a bad way, but it, there's such a direct continu- continuity there that I was shocked. I thought it'd be more, even more iterative on, on top of that. But that's a great thing because the first game plays really well. Uh, you can always be shooting with any one of the variety of weapons that you pick up in the game world. And they're usually kind of in little stashes before you go into the next combat zone. Uh, but when you kind of need to reload or run low on ammo or something's jumping at you, you bring out one of your melee weapons. And it's one of these fantastical Warhammer 40k weapons, like a chain sword, power axe. I think there's probably going to be other ones too in the game. Uh, the first game had like some really cool missions where you get a thunder hammer. Um, but yeah, and you just kind of are fluidly s- switching in between melee and uh, range combat. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, this time around though, they added in some more bes- like specific parrying and dodging the first game doesn't have that to the same degree it was more about getting your health back or your shield back by doing executions kind of like doom eternal almost in that right this one though has a lot more action game orientated yes you can parry yes you can dodge uh so that that was great to see and it's just super fun to play i really enjoyed my time with it what was your what were your thoughts oliver yeah i mean you know, I enjoyed it. I think it's a pretty solid, like, third-person action game. I don't have any experience with the original, but I can totally see that it's a bit different from a lot of other games that we've seen this generation, just in terms of its focus, in terms of that scale, in terms of the mix of melee combat and gunplay. And it is kind of its own its own little thing, which I think is cool. I love the way that, like, blood flies everywhere and how enemies react to <laughs> player fire. Like, the basic mechanics of the combat, I think, feel really really good including like the melee hits and the executions and everything like that there's some things i would note here which is that like the combat itself i did find it slightly fatiguing just because of how how much it was there's a lot and enemies arrival for multiple multiple waves and like there are certain encounters like the boss fight at the end of the campaign mission that was like a little tougher because there were lots of waves and the enemy had lots of shielding and things like this and there are some issues with like med packs being pretty far, few and far between, at least <laughs> to me, maybe I was playing badly, uh, and ammo not being super present. But then later on, I figured out, okay, you need to use the melee weapon a lot more. And, and then I got more into the swing of things there. But I also worry that because we are just dropped into this mission, which is supposedly about halfway through the game, uh, I don't really have the context <laughs> to evaluate how hard or easy this game is because like, you know, I didn't really get a tutorial or any, even any understanding of how the <laughs> controls worked, which actually like not very typical for a third person shooter, like pressing down on the D pads, which is your weapons, the B button, at least on an Xbox pad throws a grenade. So there are some quirks and I feel like right. I have a bit of a better feeling for the game with some of the context that I'm missing, because as I played it, I did feel like I got appreciably better and I understood it more. Um, and there were some like key gameplay elements, like how like the really big Tyranids you have to kind of kill them with melee attacks before I was just shooting them for a long time. And, you know, there are things you pick up. Um, it's also mm-hmm. possible I'm just a bit of a wimp. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, and, uh, I think yeah. it makes sense, though, because I, I experienced that, too. Uh, the first game doesn't have too many ranged enemies beyond uh, there's Chaos Space Marines at the end of the game that could really hurt you up. Um, but here, like a lot of the, like, Tyranid warrior forms, they had ranged weapons that could really mess you up uh, from like the mid-range distance. And while you're dealing with like the the tiny hormigons like squ- swarming next to you, like, oh, I forgot about that. And I actually died multiple times in probably embarrassing ways in retrospect uh, to ranged enemies. So I think at least with the mission we were given mid-campaign and the contextlessness of it all, it was actually probably more difficult than I imagined the game would be if you start from a, a lower base level and then ramp up the difficulty mm-hmm. from there. I also think right. like just the way this game is structured, the way that it's kind of built, it is a little bit reminiscent of like that kind of classic Gears of War co-op experience because like you're always with allies, even in the single player content, even in the campaign content, you can play the mission content as a solo player with AI allies as well. And you can play the multiplayer as well. I think that 
managing those bigger combat encounters could be probably quite a bit easier if you have a coordinated fire team to kind of work yeah. together. It's just a, it's a really fun game and it does help a lot that the graphics look consistently excellent because in a lot of these multiplayer focused games, especially ones with like a big scope as we keep harping on, they tend to have more limited visuals than this because this is like a really great looking current generation game, I would say. And so getting that really high quality action, really high quality visuals, and hopefully a really high quality campaign and really high quality multiplayer content, it just seems like a really good package, I think. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. And well, I'm excited to cover it uh, come launch. It's we're going off to Games Tom's here too. Oliver's going to be uh, staying at the home base. Uh, <laughs> but the time thereafter, when this game launches, uh, there's a couple other releases. But we are going to be definitely inserting it into our schedule and making sure we get coverage of that PC version as well as the differences between Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and covering exactly what that performance is like and if it's maybe different from what we saw in this preview and hopefully it is in some aspects. But Oliver, thank you for joining me for this video here covering Space Marine 2. Likewise, thanks Alex. Yeah, of course. And if you did like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring that little bell in the corner to get instant notifications every single time we post a video, support us on Patreon to help us out and make more content like this possible. And as always, this is Alex saying Auf Wiedersehen und Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>